After a year of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, it is impossible to obtain reliable information about the number of those mobilized in the Federation. After all, there are no exact figures for the regions. And some authorities even refused to provide data. In general, the number of those mobilized varied significantly from region to region. In some of them, the number at least declared did not exceed a thousand people. For example, in Chuvasia, more than 300 people or in Yamal 920 mobilized. In some regions we are talking about several thousand. 2,129 in the Vologda region, 2,500 in the Kirov region, or the same number in the Kaluga region. From an article of the Russian service Voice of America. Journalists from the Important Stories publication and analysts from the Conflict Intelligence team tried to calculate the number of mobilized by regions. According to their data, the highest rate of mobilization is in the Krasnoyarsk territory, Buryatia, in the Ulyanovsk and Vladimir regions and Dagestan. Any of these figures will not be accurate, whichever figure we would not name now. It will not take into account a huge part about half of those mobilized, because if we talk about those who were recruited in the previous wave of mobilization, well, they promised that they would recruit 400,000, and so they recruited. And what should we do with those who are not mobilized and who were recruited, for example, into PMCs in prisons, who were transferred rather from prisons to the private military company Wagner? And what about those who were called up as a part of the autumn call, and who still ended up at the front? At the same time, analysts argue that the poorer people live in the region, the more it was affected by mobilization. We see a correlation between the share of called-up storekeepers and the poverty of the region. In such regions, there should be many recently served contract soldiers. Often, the army in such regions is one of the few employees, as well as a social lift, from a study by conflict intelligence team analysts. There are no real statistics of losses in Russian either. So, according to the Ukrainian general staff, as of February 19, 2023, this figure was about 143,000. On the same day, February 19, the British Ministry of Defense reported that the losses of the aggressor country ranged from 175 to 200,000 people. BBC and Media Zona, based on information from open sources, found the largest number of killed military personnel from the Krasnodar territory, Sverdlovsk region and Buryatia. It is important to note that casualty figures often do not include the number of killed and wounded of the Wagner private military company. In these statistics, even if we can somehow calculate, we will get data on the military personnel who died on the territory of Ukraine. And, let's say, those bodies returned to the country. But what to do with the bodies that did not return? And what to do with those who have not been identified? And what to do again with the Wagner mercenaries who, for an independent Ukraine, are nothing but incomprehensible people with weapons in their hands, which are lying and rotting? The mobilization announced by Putin in September 2022 has seriously shaken Russian society. On the first day, at least 43 protests took place in Russia, during which 1,390 people were detained by the security forces. Most of them are in Moscow and St. Petersburg. They also protested in regions far from the capital. The most notable is the protest in Dagestan. The most protest region turned out to be the Khabarovsk territory, whose residents held over 100 actions in 116 days. However, after numerous dispersal of peaceful rallies, the Russians began to resort more often to another form of protest, arson of military commissariats and administrative buildings. Today, resistance takes on a different character. This is the struggle of each specific person for his life. Every Russian who is threatened with mobilization, and there are many of them, is fighting for his life or for the lives of his relatives. For example, an institute lecturer wrote, to whom the military enlistment officers came to the lecture, handed out summonses to the students. This is basically resistance, he kicked them out. 
There are those who change their place of residence, those who call the police, those who shelter their acquaintances and relatives. This is all resistance. More than a year after the start of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, experts say many Russians have rethought the Kremlin's propaganda messages. Huge losses at the front, lack of state support, ammunition, weapons and training for recruits, lies about mobilization and losses. All this proves that it is not worth going to die for Putin's ambitions. Reported by Roman Smoller, Yulia Hranovska, UATV News.